This is Broadway, and I think it goes without saying that this is the city's main street. I noticed several antique shops on this stretch along with some restaurants. Paducah, Kentucky is about a two-hour drive northwest of Nashville, Tennessee. Oh, and by the way, if you haven't seen this already, there's a link down below that shows you an interactive map on all of the places that I've made videos on. It's really easy to use. All you have to do is click on the link to the map, and then click on a pin that will take you to a link of said place. Paducah, Kentucky is a river town. It's located off of the banks of the Ohio River, however just east of town, both the Tennessee and Cumberland Rivers meet the Ohio, while a 50-minute drive west is the confluence of the Ohio and Mississippi Rivers. Cities like Paducah that are located off of major rivers often have rich history. Cities along these rivers grew early, as rivers proved to be the best source of transportation back in the day. Today there are still things here that make this city unique, such as the National Quilt Museum, among other things. In this video, I explore the city that is Paducah, Kentucky. Well, let's get to it, shall we? I do start the video on the far western outskirts of Paducah. If you're unfamiliar with my videos, I do speed up my videos in order to show more in a less amount of time. You can always keep up with the real time that it takes me to drive in the lower left corner of the screen. If I go too fast for you, or if you think that I'm going too slow, you can always adjust the playback speed by selecting the gear icon if you're watching on PC, or by selecting the three dotted menu if you're watching on a mobile device. Isn't YouTube great? Also really quick, as if you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe as doing all of those things helps these videos out with the YouTube algorithm. Also make sure that you hit that notification bell so that you can be notified every time that I upload a new video of an area near you. If you enjoyed this video, you might enjoy checking out some of the featured playlists on my channel. Videos on other places like Paducah can be found in my Ohio River playlist, my Kentucky playlist, or in my USA Small Cities playlist. Last but not least, if you can't get enough of me on here, you can always go follow me on my other social media accounts, and those links are below. Even though it doesn't look like it, we're still in Paducah, and it does take us a little bit before we get to the city, so for the moment you can sit back, relax, and enjoy the Kentucky countryside along with the elevator music, or you can skip ahead to the parts that you want to see with the timestamps listed below. I'll start talking again around the 4 minute and 40 second mark. As I did research for this video, I can tell that Paducah is a town that's proud of its history, and I'm aware that some of the locals might despise any sort of critique on the town, but nonetheless, here it goes. As I entered the city of Paducah, if I were to be honest, I was thinking that the west end of town looked pretty run down. If you're a local and that bothers you, just chill out, okay? I'll get to the interesting things about Paducah throughout the rest of this video. We have to be honest here though, as Paducah is home to 25,000 people, which is down from a 1960 peak population 
population of 34,000. That's a loss of 9,000 people, or about 27% of its peak population. That's quite a large decline. However, in Paducah's case, the population decline doesn't tell the whole story as McCracken County as a whole is home to 65,000 people and only saw its first population decline for quite some time during the last 10 years. The estimated population decline for McCracken County is only to be 200 people since 2010, so that's not any significant number whatsoever. So people haven't necessarily been leaving Paducah entirely. They've just left the city proper and have moved to the tiny amount of suburbs that surround Paducah. The median household income for Paducah is only $35,000 per year, while 22% of the residents live in poverty. For McCracken County, the median household income is $44,000 per year, with a poverty rate of 14%. 25% of adults 25 and older in both the county and the city hold a bachelor's degree or higher, and the median value of owner-occupied housing units in Paducah is $118,000 compared to $139,000 for the county. The property crime rates in Paducah are pretty high, as there are 5,255 property crimes for every 100,000 residents. That's more than twice the national average rate of 2,200 for every 100,000 residents and puts Paducah as one of the worst cities for property crime in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. You people in Paducah need to stop jacking each other's cars. Niche.com, however, gives Paducah an A- minus for their public schools, and Niche.com is a pretty accurate site, so that's a pretty good rating for the school system here. As I start heading towards downtown, I'll begin to mention some of the history. Paducah was founded in 1815 and the town was first called Pekin. The town's renaming comes from the Indian tribe that was known as the Paducah Indians. By the way, it was William Clark who platted out the town of Paducah. Clark is also the one who chose the name of Paducah for the town, and if you don't know who William Clark is, he is the Clark of Lewis and Clark. Nonetheless, Paducah was mostly made up of European settlers and Native Americans in its early days, and as you can imagine, the city grew due to its location off of the Ohio River. Steamboats often made stops at the city's port, manufacturing developed and took off even more once railroads came through. The surrounding region of western Kentucky and southern Illinois had a lot of coal mining activity, and Paducah became the center of the region where supplies would be shipped off and sent in. This place is called Paducah Beer Works, and I thought it had a cool sign. Nice rotating logo on top of it as well. This is downtown Paducah, and we'll be making our way in and out of downtown Paducah throughout the rest of this video. You can see that many of the original buildings are still standing, and downtown definitely has more open storefronts than vacant storefronts. Overall, I was impressed with downtown Paducah. This is Broadway, and I think it goes without saying that this is the city's main street. I noticed several antique shops on this stretch along with some restaurants. I do turn away from Broadway here, but later in the video I drive Broadway in its entirety through downtown, so I'll be back, don't worry. Just past this older looking building is the National Quilt Museum. The National Quilt Museum opened up on April 25th, 1991. Quilts might not be for everyone, but it is a nice museum. Every year in Paducah there's a quilt show and contest, and the championship quilts get put on display at the museum. If you like art, then chances are that you'll like checking out this museum. Up ahead you can see the city's flood wall, with all the major rivers of the Ohio, Tennessee, and Cumberland rivers coming together at Paducah. You would have to wonder about flooding. However, flooding in Paducah hasn't been too big of an issue over the years. The reason for that is because in 1937, the Ohio River flood put over 90% of Paducah underwater. In response to that, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers built a flood wall to protect the city, and the flood wall has done its job over the years.
When it comes to jobs and the economy, Baptist Health is the leading employer in town, followed by Mercy Health. Both hospitals employ over 1,000 workers. Then it's Four Rivers Nuclear Partnership, James Marine, which is a barge manufacturing company, and the McCracken County Public Schools tops out the top five employers in Paducah. Some people would get really upset, I imagine, if I didn't mention that Dippin' Dots Ice Cream has their headquarters in Paducah. However, it doesn't employ too many people. There's also a handful of other barge companies that operate in Paducah, making the barge industry the top industry in the city, and there's also quite a few other smaller manufacturers and warehouses throughout the city. The beautiful building on the left has the words ingrained up top saying Church of St. Francis de Sales and was built in 1899. The other beautiful building on the right? Well, I tried looking for quite some time and I couldn't find out what it was. So feel free to mention in the comment section below if you do know what that building on the right is. I'd imagine that there are quite a few locals that would know. On the right is the Lloyd Tillman House and Civil War Museum, so that's a neat place to check out if you're into the Civil War scene. Now on Kentucky Avenue, we head southwest. In this direction, the street numbers get higher as we head away from downtown. From what I've read, it appears that Jefferson Street, which is now where we are, was where all of the money was in town back in the day. You can see that the houses are all fairly big and have nice architecture to them. I circle around the blocks here to get a better view of what I thought was an abandoned school but is actually an abandoned hospital. This is the Catterjohn Building, or some people call it, the former Illinois Central Railroad Hospital. The building was constructed in 1884 and survived a fire in 1917. In 1957, the building was bought by a businessman, and the current group of owners of the building bought it at an auction in 2002. On the left is the other side of the abandoned hospital. The historical marker is completely irrelevant to the building though, as it says Forest Headquarters, and mentions the Battle of Paducah, which took place in 1864. It seems like this site was where medicine was handed out maybe during that battle. However, the Battle of Paducah was fought on March 25th, 1864. It was during the Civil War, and the Battle of Paducah was led by Major General Nathan Bedford Forrest. His mission was to capture the Union supplies in western Kentucky and Tennessee. Tennessee. Forrest had a force of 3,000 men and led a successful raid of Paducah and was able to take over the town. On the other side of the battle was Stephen G. Hicks who withdrew to Fort Anderson on the west side of town. There were around 90 Union soldiers and 50 Confederates that died during the battle as the Confederates were able to gain some supplies from the Unions. The Unions were able to keep their town in Paducah as the Confederates left.
As I was talking about the Civil War, you could see quite a few buildings and other properties that have seen much better days. As we get closer to the heart of downtown along Broadway, you'll start to see more life. Oh yes, on the right is the Columbia Theater which opened in 1927. Gotta love the old Art Deco style theaters. As we continue, you'll just see more of what we saw earlier when we were in downtown which is an abundance of antique shops and restaurants. When I visited, the Ohio River had normal water levels, so the riverfront was able to be open to the public with the flood walls open. It's not unusual to see the flood walls closed and to see this entire section of parking lot underwater. Currently, I'm in the area of Kentucky Avenue and 2nd Street, or Marine Way, and this part of downtown is where you can find the nightlife and bars.
Now, I drive through a neighborhood in town that goes by Upper Town. It's not unusual to have neighborhoods called Lower and Upper Town in River Towns, but usually the Lower Town is down by the river, while Upper Town is usually located in the part of the city that's away from the river. In Paducah, for whatever reason, both Lower Town and Upper Town are laid out in a way that they parallel the river. This part of town has definitely seen better days, but I do want to mention this. Paducah, Kentucky is home to a Superfund site, quite a large one at that. If you're unfamiliar with what a Superfund site is, a Superfund site is a plot of land that is contaminated by hazardous waste. The groundwater on the Superfund sites is unsafe to drink and contains a high amount of radioactivity. In 1952, the U.S. Department of Energy opened up the Paducah Gaseous Diffusion Plant. The plant produced enriched uranium and operated until 2013. The plant produced products for the military and then later for nuclear power. When the plant was open, it provided over a thousand jobs. Jobs. The cost of that, however, is site contamination that will last forever. What's worrisome about it, at least to me, is that it's located along the Ohio River, which is already the highest polluted river in the country, thanks to Indiana mostly. If you live in Paducah or any place that draws its water from the Ohio River or connecting tributaries, I would definitely make sure that I have a water filtration system installed at my home. That's something that local officials will never tell you because, well, they don't want to scare you away because they're trying to be attractive for new people to move in. Now, the plant that I just mentioned is several miles west of town, so the good news is that it's away from where most people live. However, when it rains heavily, the water runoff from that site does eventually make its way down to the Ohio River. Ugh. Since it's west of town, that water will flow away from Paducah, as Paducah is upstream from the site, but still, not a good feeling, at least to me. We are on the far eastern side of Paducah, which as you can tell is mostly industrial. We'll be making our way back towards the central part of Paducah before ending the video.
Among the most notable people from Paducah is Sam Champion, who's been a national TV weather anchor since 1988, Stephen Curtis Chapman, who is a Christian music artist, Irvin Cobb, who this road is named after and was an author and screenwriter, and Clarence Gaines, who had a 47-year career coaching basketball and is in the Hall of Fame. Now, when it comes to notable people mentioning, that's often where small town syndrome goes on display. If I didn't mention your favorite local celebrity, just chill out, okay? There's a lot of them, and I'm not going to mention every single one. However, you can definitely feel free to mention your favorite in the comment section below, just do so after you've calmed down a little bit after being angry at me for ripping on your city just a little, and for not mentioning your favorite well-known local. I don't feel like I've ripped on Paducah too much, though, in all honesty. I feel like I've been pretty fair. I don't know, but that's ultimately for you to decide. The church on the left is St. Matthew Lutheran Church and is a fantastic looking building. Up ahead is Noble Park, which seems to be like a nice community gathering area.
As I make a lap around the city's indoor mall, which is called the Kentucky Oaks Mall, I do end the video here. Other places of interest that I didn't get to in this video include the William Clark Market House Museum, the Paducah Railroad Museum, the River Discovery Center, and Hotel Metropolitan. I'd say that if you live within a few hours drive from Paducah, it's worth checking out the town if you're into the arts, the Civil War scene, or just learning about history in general. But it does lack entertainment options and it might not appeal to the younger crowd. Nonetheless, if you enjoy this video, Video, make sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe as doing all of those things helps these videos out with the YouTube algorithm. Also make sure to hit that notification bell so that you can be notified every time that I upload a new video of an area near you. If you enjoyed this video, you might enjoy checking out some of the featured playlists on my channel. Videos on places like Paducah can be found in my Ohio River playlist, my Kentucky playlist, and in my USA Small Cities playlist. Last but not least, if you can't get enough of me on here, you can always go follow me on my other social media accounts and those links are below. We'll see you next time. Peace!